Jeff Giannola, and we want to update you on the Eagle Creek fire burning out of control in the Columbia River Gorge. More than 10,000 acres have burned. At one time, that fire threatened the historic lodge at Multnomah Falls. This is a very serious fire. We see the ash here in Portland, the air quality, the entire state under an air quality alert right now. Fire officials are about to, to have a news Governor conference, and that includes the governor. Good afternoon, everyone. And there she is right now. Uh, Let's listen to what she has to say. To the families and communities that have been impacted by the Eagle Creek fire, uh, it looks like there is a devastating impact on the gorge. I also want to say thank you to the firefighters, our National Guards, men and women, and first responders who are literally working around the clock to protect homes and property, and of course, Oregonians from the fires. Just to give you a couple of updates on the Eagle Creek Fire and the current conditions, uh, you're probably aware that we are seeing uh, unprecedented runs in this fire over the last 24 hours. It has run 13 miles in 16 hours, due in part to multiple factors, uh, winds 30 to 40 miles an hour, uh, fuels very dry uh, weather conditions. Uh, the scale of the containment efforts at this point in time, the fire is 0% contained. Uh, obviously, the cause of the fire is under investigation. Uh, we are under operating under unified command. That means we've got federal, state, interstate, and local resources all working together. Uh, today, I activated an additional 250 guard troops. Uh, that means we have over a total of 600 National Guards, men and women, uh, supporting our firefighting efforts throughout the state of Oregon. Uh, last night, and I'll let some of the other folks talk about the heroic efforts to uh, save uh, critical infrastructure. Um, we were able, uh, folks working last night were able to save Multnomah Lodge, at least for the time being. Uh, save uh, access uh, to our state parks and our fish hatcheries. As we all know, I-84 is closed currently. Uh, the Union Pacific Railroad is closed. Uh, we're very concerned, obviously, about the Bonneville power grid and uh, the Bull One watershed being at risk. Uh, I invoked the Emergency Conflagration Action earlier uh, this week, actually in, over the weekend, uh, to make sure that our firefighting efforts were coordinated and that uh, we are making sure we're putting every single resources that we have on the ground uh, and making sure that all crews are available. Uh, I'll look forward to your questions in a minute. Uh, we are working very hard to preserve, uh, obviously, uh, make sure that our Oregonians and our firefighters are safe, uh, preserve our homes and our critical infrastructure. Thank you. Yeah, um, I think the governor did a great job of briefing the fire. So uh, I'm just going to tell you a, a quick story. Uh, we had crews in there yesterday uh, working around the communities of Dodson and Warrendale. And uh, with their combined efforts, working with ODF, working with all of our partners uh, in the U.S. Forest Service, wildland, structural firefighters working together, they were able to save uh, 58 structures in there. Uh, they were able to get in there. And it, it, was, it was really a, a, a gutsy effort. Um, they had to work to make that fire move around those structures rather than burning through them. And it was, it was house by house, structure by structure. So um, I'll take your questions later. Good afternoon. Just a few updates from the 12 o'clock press conference. Uh, I want to clarify earlier at the noon press conference, we discussed the western boundary of the level three evacuation area as being Evans Road and Corbett. Uh, that is incorrect. The western boundary is the 38700 block of Columbia River Highway, which is roughly about three miles east of Evans Road. So again, the western boundary of the level three evacuation area in Corbett is the 38700 block of Columbia River Highway. Uh, I have some new numbers here as far as the number of residences uh, that have been affected in each evacuation area. Uh, again, our level three evacuation area is approximately 400 residences. Our level two is approximately 850 residents, 850. And our level one, uh, which went into effect this morning here, essentially the east side of Troutdale, is approximately 3,400 uh, residences in that area. Uh, again, we want to reiterate, do not come into the areas affected by the fire. Uh, we are still getting reports with deputies who are patrolling the area, fire crews who are in the area, who are having to deal with people who should not be in these areas. They're curious, they're taking pictures, they're taking video. I cannot emphasize enough how dangerous that is. Uh, it places extra stress on the resources we have in the area, 
It does not allow fire crews and law enforcement to focus on what they need to be focusing on. So please do not drive out here. Do not come out here to these areas. Thank you. With that, I'd ask we have about five, uh, four or five minutes for questions. If people would like to direct their questions, whether it's a state or local question, um, uh, you can go ahead and begin. Sure. Obviously, our top priority is to protect Oregonians and public safety and, of course, Washingtonians as well. Second, uh, critical infrastructure. Um, in terms of the gorge, it is a special place for many of us, and we are very concerned about the impact of this fire. It's looking roughly around 10,000 acres at this point, um, and the conditions are very uh, intense. Um, so. Um, we're very concerned and doing everything we can to both contain and put every resources that we have available on it. Does the state have enough resources to battle this fire with so many fires going in the state? Uh, I just want to give you a perspective about what's happening. So on the Chetco Bar fire, we're at roughly 170,000 acres there. Uh, last week we had over 1,400 personnel on that fire. I've activated uh, at this point over 600 National Guards men and women. Um, they essentially are not uh, at a firefighting level. They're a post cleanup mop up capacity. Um, so we are putting every resources that we have into this one, into Chetco Bar, into a number of the fires in Central Oregon. Do we need more? Certainly. We're using everything that we have available to us. Governor, what's the plan if more evacuations become necessary? Where will those people go? You want to talk? Uh, where'd the sheriff go? You want to talk? We can talk about uh, the share. I'll, I'll just tell you the uh, wonderful efforts that have been happening down on the Chetco Bar. Um, we had uh, we opened up our parks uh, free of charge to folks that were being evacuated in the Chetco Bar in the Southern Oregon area, and then we've been partnering with our California partners as well to provide uh, shelter resources. And the Red Cross has stepped up to the plate. So I'm going to talk. I'm going to let him respond more, in more detail. As far as emergency shelters. Uh, if the area that's in a level one right now were to get elevated to a level two, the Multnomah County Office of Emergency Management have been working on contingency plans to identify potential locations for shelters. Uh, in addition, uh, most folks have noticed after a noon press conference that the current shelter in Mount Hood Community College is very close to the southern boundary of our level one evacuation area. So there is contingency planning going on by the Multnomah County Emergency Management Office of Emergency Management. And if and when the decision is made that additional shelters need to be opened or that shelter needs to be moved, then the sheriff's office will assist in any way we can to make that happen. Okay. Governor, a couple more questions for you. I think you get one. Sure. <laughs> What would you like to see happen to the person or people who started this fire? Uh, look, uh, the cause of the fire is under investigation at this point. Um, I would expect that they be held fully accountable for what has happened. Uh, but I think more broadly it's a lesson for all of us um, in terms of how we go about our daily lives and the potential impact on uh, communities, uh, our surrounding communities and our environment. Um, we are uh, in under very dry conditions right now. And uh, whether it's a cigarette, a lawnmower, a car off the road, people need to be extremely careful. Obviously, uh, fire uh, banned in certain areas. Um, folks need to be extremely careful and conscientious of how they're going about their lives. Um, one more question. The Bull Run water shed is very close to the fire perimeter. Just looking at that map, it's the drinking water for one in five people in the state. Um, what is the plan to protect the Bull Run, and what happens if the fire actually burns down? So, like I said, we're focused on preserving Oregonians' public safety. We're focused on critical infrastructure. Uh, the fire is within a couple of miles of the Bull Run watershed area. I'm well aware it's obviously the source of uh, many Oregonians' uh, drinking water. I know from talking to the uh, Portland Water Bureau folks that we have an alternative source. Um, is there anybody here from the city? We don't have anybody here from the city. You want to come? Uh, 
regarding the Bull Run watershed, um, the um, the Water Bureau has authorized the Forest Service to do water drops using um, Blue Lake and any other resources besides the, the reservoirs up there in order to um, do whatever surprise, fire suppression efforts that they need to do. So Governor, thank, given thank, the severity of the uh, fire season, which could, fires could start anywhere, is there anything else that the state could be doing? Super thank you. I appreciate the super tanker question. We've been uh, the super tanker question's been raised uh, as well on the Chetco Bar fire. Um, we have access to super tankers. Um, the reality is, given the challenging conditions, both um, extreme wind conditions, gusts up to 30 and 40 miles an hour, uh, the fact that the air has been uh, extremely smoky, we have we have limited ability to use the super tankers. We are using every tool in the toolbox that we have at this point in time. As I said, uh, we had over a thousand folks on the Chetco Bar fire. We now have over 300 personnel here on this fire, and I've activated uh, over 600 uh, National Guards men and women. If so, the conditions change, would you be uh, wanting to bring in a super taker? We we will use all of the tools in the toolbox as weather conditions allow. Thank you, ladies thank and gentlemen. You. Thank you. We're going to have thank you, Governor Brown. We're going to have. Um, some individuals from agencies if you want to do a one-on-one -on -one. but again we appreciate you coming and we will be doing another briefing at 6 okay you've just tonight. been listening Thank to a you. news conference governor brown heading that news conference bringing us up to date on the eagle creek fire and i think she said it best when she said it has had a devastating impact on the columbia river gorge an area that we all love and in a lot of ways defines the area we live in also, there's concern over the BPA power grid with the transmission lines running through the fire zone and the Bull Run watershed. And you heard there's concern over that right now, the fire burning dangerously close to that. Keep it right here on Coin 6, the very latest at the top of the hour during our 4 o'clock newscast.